We usually think of them as bloodthirsty murderers, but sometimes the best bad guys have no blood on their hands. Terminator, immediately. Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 movie villains who shockingly didn't kill anyone. Before we begin, we publish new videos every day, so be sure to subscribe for more great content. For this list, we'll be focusing on villains who don't personally kill their victims on screen, but may use other people to kill on their behalf. Tomorrow the world will watch in horror as its greatest city destroys itself. The movement back to harmony will be unstoppable this time. Number 10. The Wicked Witch of the West. The Wizard of Oz. Stay away from her, or I'll stuff a mattress with you! She is a mean green flying machine, not to mention a classic image of villainy. <laughs> She's feared throughout the land of Oz for her wickedness and evil deeds. But surprisingly, her list of evil deeds does not include murder. I'll get you, my pretty, and your little dog, too! <laughs> yes, the Wicked Witch threatens Dorothy when she first arrives in Oz, sets the Scarecrow on fire, and almost kills Dorothy. But she never succeeds in murdering anyone. Actually, if anyone should be charged with murder, it's Dorothy, who kills both the Wicked Witch of the East and the West. Ultimately, the Wicked Witch of the West is nothing more than a cranky neighbor from Kansas, reimagined by a girl who was somewhere over the rainbow during a tornado. You cursed brat! Look what you've done! I'm melting! Melting! Number 9. Ian Howe, National Treasure. Let me go. Just bring her. No, no. When it comes right down to it, Ian Howe is just an overly enthusiastic treasure hunter who really wants to win. If that means lying, breaking and entering, stealing and kidnapping, along with blackmail and death threats, then you can be sure he will do it. If they want the declaration back, not just a box of confetti. And you've come alone. He's pretty much Benjamin Franklin Gates, just without the moral code. Yet, for all his blackmail, betrayal, and deception, Ian never kills anyone. However, that doesn't mean he holds a whole lot of respect for human life. Don't speak again. Okay. It's clear he doesn't care one way or another if his fellow treasure hunter Ben dies or not, particularly when he leaves Ben and his friends trapped in a rickety old underground room that could collapse at any given moment. See you, Ben. Number 8. Cruella de Vil. 101 Dalmatians. <laughs> as far as villains go, if she doesn't scare you, no evil thing will. Cruella is so desperate for a new fur coat, she's willing to kidnap and mass murder a litter of Dalmatian puppies. Pretty sure that's a fashion faux pas, but thankfully she only succeeds in the kidnapping part. Catch those puppies! To add to her list of crimes, she also threatens the owner of those Dalmatians when they refuse to let her buy them, leading to the kidnapping, and is pretty darn mean to her henchmen Jasper and Horace. Shut up! However, you have to admire her determination when she tracks down the puppies after they escape. This just goes to show that you should always look out for Cruella de Vil. I'll be wearing Anita's dogs. <laughs> Number 7. Zool, Ghostbusters. <laughs> Who are you gonna call when this demon shows up in your refrigerator? Zool is a demigod and a minion of Gozer the Destructor. And while this monster's chosen form certainly looks as if it could kill, it has other plans while staying on this earthly plane. This shapeshifter's job is to bring Gozer into the human dimension. And in order to do that, it haunts Dana Barrett's fridge and takes possession of her body. There is no Dana, only Zool. Zool also helps cause what we can only assume is millions of dollars in property damage and consummates an unwanted relationship with Dana's dorky neighbor, who's also been taken over by spirits. But all in all, this demon leaves its victims alive, not dead. I am the key master. I am the gatekeeper. Number 6. King Xerxes, 300. This is Sparta! Actually, he's the Persian king come to invade Greece 
You'd think, based off his multiple piercings and snazzy jewelry, that this is definitely a guy who's ready to spill some blood. But nope. Xerxes is always just behind the front lines of the battle, out of harm's way. Blood of them! And while Xerxes' soldiers kill nearly all 300 Spartans under their king's orders, Xerxes himself never delivers a killing blow. Which is surprising in an action film, where a lot of blood and gore is to be expected. It's even more surprising considering the protagonist Leonidas does his fair share of killing, while Xerxes, the evil emperor, does not. Come, Leonidas. Let us reason together. Number 5. Rene Belloc, Raiders of the Lost Ark. So once again, Jones, what was briefly yours is now mine. Belloc is like the anti-Indiana Jones. On the one hand, much like Indy, Belloc searches for rare historical artifacts. However, on the other, instead of donating those artifacts to museums, Belloc sells them to the highest bidder. It's worthless. Ten dollars from a vendor in the street. But I take it, I bury it in the sand for a thousand years, it becomes priceless, like the Ark. But as much as Belloc is Jones' rival in every way, he does want Indy alive, partly out of respect for a fellow archaeologist, and partly because Belloc piggybacks off of Indy. He lets Jones do the dirty work, then swoops in at the last minute to take the credit. Dr. Jones, again we see there is nothing you can possess which I cannot take away. He may threaten, steal, lie, and accidentally get himself and all the Nazis killed, but at the end of the day, Belloc's a coward who'd rather take the easy way out than engage in a fight to the death. Who knows? In a thousand years, even you may be worth something. <laughs> Number 4. Grand Moff Tarkin, Star Wars Episode 4, A New Hope. Fear will keep the local systems in line. Fear of this battle station. He's the muscle behind the Death Star and a favorite of Palpatine. He works alongside the notorious Darth Vader in pursuit of the Rebel Alliance. He orders the destruction of Princess Leia's home planet Alderaan after he tricked her into revealing the rebel base location and ordered her execution. You don't know how hard I found it signing the order to terminate your life. I'm surprised you had the courage to take the responsibility yourself. Yet despite his role in the Empire, Grand Moff Tarkin's hands are technically clean. He never pushed the button himself for the annihilation of Alderaan, nor did he succeed in killing Leia. In fact, rather than kill the princess, he allows her to escape with Han and Luke so he can track them to the true location of the rebel base and finish the alliance. For this villain, his victims are worth more to him alive than dead. Taking an awful risk, Vader. This had better work. Number 3. Ra's al Ghul, Batman Begins. No one can save Gotham. This is a villain who plans to destroy hundreds of thousands of lives. Yet not once does he kill anyone, but not for lack of trying. Ra's al Ghul, leader of the League of Shadows, takes a less direct approach in bringing about the downfall of Gotham. He and his league actually caused the Great Depression that affected Gotham and resulted in rising crime rates and Bruce Wayne's parents' deaths. When that failed, he employed Jonathan Crane, the notorious Scarecrow, and his terrifying fear toxin a drug that has the potential to make anyone insane. Even when he's trying to get revenge on Bruce Wayne, Ra's al Ghul leaves him for dead in a burning house rather than killing the man himself. You burned my house and left me for dead. Consider us even. Number two, Bill, Kill Bill. This is me and my most masochistic. It's ironic that the name of the movie is Kill Bill, and yet Bill, who does commit other crimes, never kills himself. Well, at least directly. Instead, Bill has his snakes from the deadly Viper Assassination Squad do all the work. Sure, he orders the mass murder of innocent wedding guests, but Bill never successfully commits an on-screen murder in this Tarantino revenge flick. When it comes to tracking Beatrix down, it's Bud and Elle who are hot on her tail. Bill, in the meantime, is with his daughter, whom he'd kidnapped and raised in secret, hidden from her mother. In the end, it's Beatrix, the heroine, who does the killing, which is the whole point of the movie anyway. Number 1. 
Le Chiffre, Casino Royale. I'll feed you what you see not to value. It's all a numbers game with Le Chiffre. As a banker for terrorist organizations, he is responsible for handling their investments and earning large amounts of money. So it's fitting that he enjoys dealing in games of chance and probability rather than force or violence. The only weapon he uses is his mind, which is why, after losing all of his investors' money, he resorts to gambling rather than robbery to get it back. You changed your shirt, Mr. Bond. I hope our little game isn't causing you to perspire. Le Chiffre outwits him in poker with bluffs and poison. Even when he resorts to torture, Le Chiffre takes pleasure in seeing a man's mind deteriorate with the pain rather than sentencing him to death. However, in the end, it would seem that the numbers were against him. Money isn't as valuable to our organization as knowing who to trust. Do you agree with our picks? Check out these other great clips from WatchMojo and subscribe for new videos every day.